Hi there! Today we're going to take a look at the Enhanced Report Printing options that were recently added to Risa 3D version 12. To show off these new features, i am just opened up my Risa 3D sample model. There's just a multi-material model. And what I intend to do is to solve the model and then create a report that contains just the information about my concrete members. And we'll use the Enhanced Report Printing options to do that. Before I go ahead and solve, I want to set up some of my report printing preferences. And I can do that here through the Tools menu by selecting Preferences. Then I'll click on the Printing tab, and here on the right-hand side are my report printing preferences. The graphic printing preferences are on the left, but we're going to stick with just the report printing preferences for now. Here you see the various options, and we'll just go through them one by one. If I want to use color or not for my printout, I can check this box. I can uncheck it if I want everything to print in black and white. If I want to use line shading on my spreadsheets, I'll use this checkbox. And what that does is for all the spreadsheet, the input and the output spreadsheets that come here from the data entry toolbar or from the results toolbar after solving, they print out in a table form. So if we use this line shading, the printout will, will shade every other line in your table so it's a lot easier to read. I want to also keep my date and time shown on the printout, so I'll check that box on. And next I can select my report header options. I have the options here to do four lines, one line, or no header at all. If I select the four line option, which is our default, it's going to print out the model title, the company name, the designer name, and the job number as our header. That information all comes from global parameters on the description tab. So it's all of this information here, the model title, the company name, the designer name, and the job number. I'll go back into Preferences. If I were just to choose the one line report header option, it would just print the model title and none of the other information about your company or designer or job number. I'm going to stick with four lines so we can see the full header printout. Next, I'm going to click on the Report Logo button here to select my report logo. Now, the default option is just to use the Risa Tech logo. You could also turn that off and use no logo at all, or you can select this custom image and browse to select your own company logo. I'll save that here. I'm going to leave my report orientation set to Portrait, and then I'll click OK to save my preferences. I want to get a couple model graphical images before I s go into the spreadsheet. So I've previously saved a selection state of just my concrete elements. I'll retrieve that here. And then I want to take a snapshot of this model view to include in my report. The new report printing option to take the snapshot is just simply called the snapshot button. And it's up here in the upper left hand corner. It's this pick icon of a camera. I can click on that when I'm in any graphical view, and I have the graphic print options. I'm going to give this a title, Concrete Model View, and then I'll click Continue to save the image as either a PNG or a PDF, which I can then include with my report. I'm going to leave it as a PNG image file. I'll leave it as a Model View 01, that's fine, and I'll save it. I want to also click off the rendering and just turn on the member labels and take another snapshot of this view so I can refer back to this view when I'm comparing my results from the spreadsheets. I'll go ahead and click the snapshot button again, title it member labels, and click continue. This one saves as model view 02, and that's just fine. Now I'm going to go ahead and solve the model batch solution. And after I've solved it, I'm going to grab one more model view of the color coding with the code checks. So to do that, I'm going to close out the data entry and the results toolbar so I can see my legend here in reference to the model view. I'll take a snapshot of that as well. That saves as model view 3. And now we're ready to look at the detail reports. I'm just going to take a look at a couple detail reports of my governing members here. I have a beam down here that has a unity check of 0.99, which is rather high. So I'm going to grab that. 
And we'll see in the detail report view, there's a new button up top that's the same, the snapshot button. So to include that in my report, I'm going to do the same thing as the graphical image. Click on that, and we'll see here that it automatically tells me in the title, this is member M4 envelope report. Save that. I'm going to grab the detail report of this column over here on the left in a similar manner. See the member label updates here, so it's correctly reporting which detail report in the label. Click Save. And then lastly, we're going to take a look at the wall. And just like the two members, the wall detail report also has my snapshot button. So I'm going to click on that, save the wall panel summary report, and I've got all my model views that I want to include in my report. Now to build my report, I'm going to go up to the File menu and select Print. And this is the same image, or excuse me, same dialog as we were seeing before with the graphic print. But in order to print my report, I'm going to click on this button, <coughs> print a report instead. And that'll take me into the report printing dialog. This looks pretty similar to what it used to look like if you had been in here before in any of the previous versions. But you'll notice we've added a couple options here to include those snapshot images. Those are all listed here and I can add or remove those to my current report at any time. So the way this works is all the available report sections, these are all of the spreadsheet input and output options are all listed here and I can build a report by simply double clicking on any of these and they'll jump over into my sections in current report. This is what will print out with my report. I could select a whole group of them by clicking on one, holding down shift and then clicking on another and I can send them all over. I can do the same with my images. I can add those. Oops, I might have gotten one I didn't care for. I can remove it and they'll just go back and forth and I can create a report however I like. There's also several default options for creating a quick report. I'll remove these all here and everything will go back to the original default of nothing in my report except for the header and the footer. And I can take a look over here at my saved reports. If I click on this drop down menu, I can see that there are several default reports listed here. All input and output, just input, just output, output from a single load combination slash a batch solution or all output from an envelope solution. So you can have the, the different spreadsheets included there automatically. I previously created this custom concrete report which I can select by clicking that on that and we'll see that it opens up here. I may have, <coughs> excuse me, I may have created this with a previous model and I want to edit it for this model and I can easily do that and then save it as a secondary customized report for later use. So what I can do is I can go in and, and change any of the options or remove any of the sections here to get it to be exactly what I want. So say I don't really care for the plate information or the solids. I'm going to remove all of these guys by selecting them and clicking remove to move them to the available side. And then I'm going to add in all those images that I previously took snapshots of and now I have my new customized report for this model. Now I'm going to save it again. I can save it by simply clicking on the save button and entering in a new report name say custom, oops, concrete 2. Click OK and it'll save it here in our list for later use. Now below that you'll see there's similar report options to what we saw in the tools preferences and a lot of these read in the same way and if we had them set in tools preferences you should see that reflected here but if you wanted to make any edits you could do that here as well. If you wanted to print it in color versus black and white the shaded lines, your report header information. In addition to those, you also have the option to set your page numbers here. So this is the starting page number. You can start it at any number you like. I'm actually going to keep it at just page one. But then we have the option to start at page. And this is a little bit different. Say you had a table of contents that you intend to put at the beginning of your report. So you want the page numbers to start at one, but you want it to start after the table of contents. So you want it to start on page three. That'll give us an allowance of two pages in the beginning 
that will have table of contents information, which you might give a different page numbering style to. You can also click down here on item options for just a couple more options, and this has to do with the various output printing. So if you had member forces or member stresses, you have the option here to print out all the member sections. If you had set the solution to include five member sections, you'll see all five member section results print out. Or you can easily quickly go to just the member endpoints if you're only interested in that information. Yeah. That will reduce it down so you only have two forces coming out for each member as opposed to five. Now that's not always going to catch all the maximum forces or stresses, so you I choose or I would recommend just sticking with the all member sections, which is our default as well. If I had been printing out plate options, I could also choose to select top stresses only as opposed to top and bottom, which print out by default. So I'm just going to leave those as the default. I'll click cancel to close out of there. And now I've set up my report fully and I can take a look at the various printing options. First, you have just this, the regular print button and this is going to call up a print dialog similar to what you're used to where you can select any of your physical printers. You might have an Adobe PDF in this list as well, but that'll get you to any of the physical printers that you have set up in your office. If you want to go straight to PDF, you can always click right on the create a PDF button as well and that'll give you the option to save it and then it will create it right then and there with just one click. I won't do that just yet, but we'll come back to that. The third option is to create a flat file. And this gives you an option to build a text file, essentially, of your spreadsheet results. It will not include any sort of print formatting, um, column headers, or graphical elements, such as any of those graphical screenshots we took. But it will allow you to get all of your spreadsheet input and output in information, whatever you've included in the sections and current report, and it'll print it out in a text eliminated file. I just noticed here that I didn't quite get all of my images. I must have clicked back. So I'm going to add those in and make sure they're included in my report. Now that I've gone through all that, I do want to just create a PDF. So I'm going to go the quick and easy route and say, create a PDF. I'll just save it easy to my desktop and let it build that PDF for me. It's just going to build it page by page and as soon as it do is done it should just open up your PDF program to read it and then you can take a look at your finalized report, make any um, edits or comments to it. If you wanted to go back and create a new report you can always easily come back into this reset 3D report printing dialog and make any changes that you might want to make. This is building quite a large report, and here it is. So you see here I have my custom report logo here shown in the upper left-hand corner. I'll go down, and we have all of the various input options that I selected. We'll scroll all the way down, and I had images saved in at the bottom. We should see those images from the graphical view as well as from our detail reports shown here at the bottom. Here they are. So it ended with our last spreadsheet option and it goes right into the detail reports for those members that I selected and some of our graphical views as well. And there's the wall detail report. And that's it. Everything's page numbered. The headers are all shown here. There's the company, designer, job number, model name, as we discussed before, time and date, and the header for the various information that's shown on that page. And that's all. If you have any other questions, please feel free to email us at support at resa.com or check out our help file within the program. You can get to it by going up to help, help topics. If you go into the contents window, you can come down to the printing topic, and you'll see all the information listed there. Thanks, have a great day.